What's up, YouTube? Midnight Crawler, back up in this piece. And welcome to the very first episode of Regurgitated Rewind. It's just a fancy title for what I watched this week. Now, I know I don't do a lot of YouTube videos as of late, so this is my attempt to try to get back into, uh, into the groove. And a special shout out to Amy from Amy's Autopsy Report for helping me come up with a title for this What I Watched theme. So yeah, first episode, Regurgitated Rewind. Here we go. No fancy edit. Okay. Um, Thursday, I kicked things off with revisiting something for the very, for the second time. Okay. It's going to be Juan Lopez Moctezuma's Alucarda. Now, I don't know if this is, it says 1975 on the back of the box. IMDb has it at 1977. Regardless. Alucarda. Finally watched it for the second time. Every time I attempt to watch this in the past, you know, re-watch it in the past, something came up like a friend comes over, blah, 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 etc. You know, you know what I mean. Anyways, before we jump in, I talk a little bit about this. The director, Juan Lopez Moctezuma, he also directed a movie called, hold on, I have my notes down here while I avert my eyes, The Mansion of Madness. Now, I wouldn't say The Mansion of Madness is quite horror, but Alamo Drafthouse was having it screened on, you know, on the big screen for a Weird Wednesday event, and I took a date. And that was my first time watching it, as well as hers, and it was a pretty boring film. I could see she was nodding off at times. I was just itching it, itching for it to hurry up and finish. Um, yeah, it wasn't for me, but Alucarda is different in all the good ways, in all the, in all the best ways. It's a lot of horror, a lot of occult, a lot of satanic goodness. Um, the atmosphere is what really sells this film. It's really cloudy, foggy, subterranean. It's freaking amazing. That's all I can say about it. It's amazing. Alucarda, so happy I watched it for the second time. Definitely give it a go if you've never seen this. And uh, yeah, I actually liked it more the second time than the first time. So if I had to rate this... Uh, 9 out of 10 for me. Bam. All right. Let's move things on to what I watched on Friday. And that's going to be Vanishing Point. Now, Vanishing Point is a film that I never really heard too much about until I watched uh, Quentin Tarantino's Death Proof. And that, I believe they talk a lot about it during like the special features, which I was big on back in the days when I had a lot of time. I'd watch like special features. I'd, I'd flow through a disc, you know, watching everything, every little extra in it. But uh, yeah, anyways, Vanishing Point finally got around to it and I can see why it's just, you know, so talked about when it comes to like car films, you know what I mean? Um, wow. The thing about this one, uh, well, you know, before I jump into that, now Vanishing Point was released in 1971, directed by Richard C. Serafian, and the director has an extensive uh, filmography director directing and acting as well uh one of the movies that i suggest you check out that i just love had no idea he directed was eye of the tiger right here down here at the bottom starring gary Busey. this movie is amazing it's a total action cheese fest and if you like the theme song eye of the tiger it gets played constantly in this it's freaking awesome you can pick it up in this really sexy shop factory release pretty dope all right uh, back to the movie Vanishing Point. Okay, I like the way that they just like throw you into this epic chase scene, you know, where he's in like in this white Dodge Challenger, I believe, and the cops are trying to get him. And then it finally, it, it's only about like 10 minutes or so, and then it like transitions back to the beginning of the story, which there's not much dialogue and it just throws you into the mix. There's, it just lets you figure it out yourself. Basically, this dude, he's, he's trying to uh, get from Colorado to San Francisco in a set amount of time. And uh, yeah, from there, the first half, it's like chase scenes and then the second half is like the surrealness so yeah basically like the first half pops some speed and he's running from the cops you know in a car <laughs> if that makes any sense and then the second half like he finds himself in the desert with rattlesnakes this religious group this motorcycle dude who you know gets more speed uh, you know to continue his journey and this naked chick on a bike but it turns from speed to an acid trip it's it's just amazing the way they did this film and one that I'm glad I discovered finally and I'll definitely be checking out more often uh, if I had to rate this it's an 8 out of 10 for me 
All right, and finally, what I watched last night. It's one that I've been itching to uh, get into for the longest time. I've always seen like the Troma DVD release everywhere. And uh, a friend sent this one to me, a Fiendom film on VHS, which is a very sexy Star Maker VHS. I love that cover art, Combat Shock. Now this was, I don't know if it's released in 1984, that's what IMDB says. Letterboxd, however, has it released at 1986, so it's one of those again. Uh, directed by Buddy Gio Benazzo, who uh, has a couple other, other films, you know, uh, but not too many. Uh, what's really cool about this is uh, brother plays the lead actor, Rick Gio Benazzo, and it's like some low budget guerrilla shooting in New York kind of goodness, man. So basically, like, what I like about this is like it just throws you into this like guy who has been dealt a really, who has been dealt a very shitty hand, <laughs> and he's like a Vietnam vet who has been like exposed to that chemical. I believe it's called Agent Orange. So his kid is like deformed. His wife is like constantly complaining because there's no food in the house. He's about to be evicted and he has no job. So he just wanders the street looking for anything he can salvage, you know, scavenge for anything that can feed his family. Um, but I, what's really cool is like the kid now is, um, I, I looked up on IMDb, they, they created him for $146. And it's this, it's this like puppet or, you know, that kind of looks like a great alien. Uh, it sounds really bad, but it's pulled off so well because there's so much emotion in that little baby they created, this deformed baby. And it's constantly crying, it's hungry, and then it, at the end, it's just like, oh man, I, I felt for the baby, man, I'm telling you. But um, yeah, I don't want to give too much away, but there is this sub story where the lead actor has a friend who's addicted to the heroin. And uh, it kind of like follows a sub story about his adventure, you know, trying to score. And finally, he scores a bag, and he uh, he doesn't have a needle and syringe, so he, you know, he gets his arm out. He you see all these track marks and this nasty, just you know, scabbing right here, you know, where he constantly shoots up, and it immediately reminded me of Requiem for a Dream. If you've ever seen that movie, when Jared Leto's character is just like the same thing, he just can't shoot up because it's just so nasty. It's, reminded me of immediately but yeah so his friend gets a coat hanger and just jabs at the scabbing until it starts bleeding and oozing and he just pours in the his bag in there the straight main, main lines it i was like whoa man that's insane but the ending is awesome i actually uh love this more than i thought i would this was a nine out of ten for me guys definitely check it out if you've never seen it all right that's gonna be it for the very first episode, Regurgitated Rewind, aka what I watched this week. So leave your thoughts down below, please. I'd like to hear hear them. I'd like to read them. Uh, what you thought of these movies, if you ever seen them, and I uh, will catch you guys next week. Peace.